Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you are from, everybody. And thank you for joining the session today where Joe and I will talk through a little bit about uh, CBAN, the work that we've done, and what we're aiming to um, achieve through our work for the telecom sector. Joe's then going to take you through a little bit of uh, why we see this convergence, as Annabelle talked about, between mobile devices and vehicles. Um, and therefore how we believe the sectors can work together uh, to achieve more for everybody, uh, essentially. So in terms of CBAN, we uh, believe that for, in terms of the telecom sector, we exist and we're here to help them to unlock the future of connectivity, which is evolving uh, rapidly. So in terms of an agenda for today, uh, we'll talk through a little bit about why we see a need for what we call automated interconnection. Uh, we'll introduce a little bit about CBAN and then talk about the Moby CBAN Corporation that we've embarked on. So uh, we talk quite a lot in our industry and in our sector, and, and I'm sure at Moby you do as well, that essentially the future will be built on connectivity. And that is not just from a device point of view, but in terms of the types of traffic uh, that, is, uh, that is being used to consume data services, um, that is increasing as well. And um, it's ever evolving and it will continue to, to evolve. We, um, I'm based here in the UK and we are rapid firing in terms of rolling out a 5G network across the country. Um, but I did read a report not that long ago that said there are already plans in place to roll out a 6G network. So it's an area of technology and particularly when we think about connectivity um, that is ever evolving and the pace of change in that um, is very, very rapid. Clearly it's uh, being able to connect and being able to be agile and to um, to use data services in things like the vaccination process for the COVID pandemic. Um, you know, that is, that is something that has only um, happened at the pace that it's happened because of the way that we can connect data and share data across different things, different devices, different organizations, different people, different sectors. I would also argue that the, uh, the only way the world has kept productive and that the economy globally hasn't fallen into a bigger pit um, is because of connectivity and being able to keep people productive. So whilst I say on this slide, the future will be built on connectivity, I think we've seen an acceleration of that in 2020 and more and more, um, certainly in our members, they are thinking about how we need to evolve to take advantage of that and one of those is around how we bill and settle um, data transfer between each other. So that's where we see it today. Obviously that will continue uh, to, to evolve. And again, this is a very uh, telecoms industry sector specific slide um, but to show our members and to show our potential members the opportunity that exists um, when we think specifically about automating the billing and settlement end of the supply chain, uh, which is the end of the supply chain that CBAN sits in. So what we're doing is helping them to sustain the core. Um, if you think about, uh, for those of us who are old enough, having a landline phone in the home um, and you would make a voice call that could be to your next door neighbor or could be to a family member interstate or um, internationally. Um, and that, that was a high yield product 20, 30 years ago. That continues to decrease. So even though we, um, we still use a lot of voice and, and in fact, the telecom sector has seen an increase in revenue derived from voice services in 2020, it is a low yield uh, margin product. Data as it becomes more, um, uh, more ubiquitous across different sectors is also a, a product that is declining in yield, particularly as we start to think about um, all you can consume type models, um, where for those that are a high consumer, the provider is taking a much lower yield. So by automating the billing and settlement process of that, we not only sustain the margin that's available there, um, but we free up capital to invest in, in other areas, which leads us into item two of the stack there. 
So how do we uh, take advantage of the innovation that's happening around connectivity? Services like on-demand services, um, services that sit, connectivity that sits on the edge um, and any other new cases, use cases that come in, how do we as a sector take advantage of those if we're still relying upon manual processes um, for what is what is a very simple end of the uh, the supply chain, and then accessing new services where I guess the we start to now think about the opportunity with organisations like Mobi, as the telecom sector moves up the stack. How do we enable them to take advantage of those new types of services, particularly as we think about revenue opportunities in IoT, as we think about the ability to earmark different types of data. Um, and therefore charge and monetizing it, monetize it accordingly, um, there's no way to do that unless there is a mechanism for uh, automating that. It certainly can't be done manually. So some of the research that's been done, we've worked with Gartner, with IDC, Telegeography and Delta Partners to identify what that opportunity is worth. And at that third layer um, of the stack, we see that at around about three trillion dollars um, that's open to the opportunity to take advantage of by 2030. So I think this is something that uh, everyone, but particularly Mobi members, would be very familiar with. But from a telecom sector, the way in which we deliver connectivity to the end user is only increasing in complexity. It's converging, it's, it needs to uh, connect across multiple devices, and that needs to happen at speed um, in, in many respects for many services with zero uh, latency or next to no um, latency in there as all, at, at all. Um, we see, we've referenced down there the move from 5G to 6G and that will only continue to increase the complexity um, that exists in terms of delivering connectivity from one source to another. One very simple example, if a, you know somebody wants to provide an SAP license via a Amazon Web Services Cloud um, using um, Verizon's fiber, um, that's three different providers in there. And if you don't have a way to automate the billing and settlement across that, then you either need to expect the end user to have a service with each one of those providers, um, or somebody doesn't make um, anything within that, within that interconnection. So that's why we've identified for the telecom sector um, that delivering connectivity will only continue to increase um, and it's essential that we therefore automate it. So that's where we come to talk about CBAN and how CBAN came into, uh, into being. Um, and this is, I guess, our, our statement in terms of uh, our purpose and how we came to be. Um, but at the heart of our story, it is a, a spirit of collaboration. We, uh, we want to innovate for the industry and because we are a membership organization that was started by the industry for the benefit of the industry, we have a shared vision that the communication space does need an independent body to help enable and drive change um, through automation. And we'll talk in a little bit of a later slide um, why it needs to happen um, as, a, as a collaborative effort with, with a body that's independent um, because of the, the complex nature of what we, what we do and what we deliver. So the role of CBAN is that we coordinate the development of our architecture, our membership and services um, to the members. Um, and all of this coordination effort is about innovating in the communication space. Um, and Joe will talk you through a little bit about what we're doing in terms of some of that innovation and some of the use cases and where we are on that, that journey. We also have a responsibility to grow and maintain our shared ecosystem, um, which helps to unlock the value and efficiencies for all. And if I just pause for a moment and talk about what our ecosystem is. So our ecosystem has three parts to it. The first is our, uh, the primary is our members, and they are um, carriers or, or providers within the um, the ICT service provider space, the information communications technology space, who uh, will be the, the ones who will automate the services. They're the ones that are trading between each other. The second part of our ecosystem is the technology partners. Some of those will be familiar to you because we have shared 
uh, membership across our technology partners, organizations like R3, um, uh, Algorand, um, IBM, um, some of the others, CSG, that I think are, are shared members. And they work with us to help develop the solutions and ultimately that will be the ones that um, then build the applications that will sit on the CBAN network that the carriers or our members will use to uh, run automation. And then the third part of the ecosystem um, is organisations like Mobi. It's other membership bodies. There are several within the telecom sector who have very specific areas of interest, whether that be around automation um, for data services or automation for um, phone devices. And we collaborate with them in order to make sure that there is a single standard rather than multiple standards um, that then somebody needs to build separately something like an API that can then br um, bridge them and hold them all together. So we work across all of those groups. Our third area of responsibility is overseeing the implementation of our technology solutions and standards. Um, and that's to ensure that we do have that consistency, that everyone plays by the same rules, um, that there is actually interoperability across all members. Um, so that if um, one person, one carrier wants to use a particular vendor um, who uses a particular blockchain, um, that it can still be interoperable with, um, with other applications and, and other blockchain solutions. So in terms of CBAN as an organization, we are a non-profit asso membership association and we oversee a network. So the CBAN association is the governing entity. Uh, we set the direction, we govern the roadmap, um, we manage um, participation and membership. Uh, any service provider member is eligible to join um, and Joe will talk a little bit about some of the core services that ultimately will then govern the network, which is what we oversee. And that's a federated decentralized network that will handle consensus, that will handle the operations um, and <clears throat> participating members will operate a node as part of that distributed ledger. Um, so that's the, uh, the role of, of CBAN overseeing the, the network um, interoperability, I, I've talked about that a, a couple of times, and, and again, this might be very specific to the telecoms sector, um, and I don't know, I apologise, I don't know very much about the automotive or vehicle sector, um, so there may be um, some comparisons here or <clears throat> some um, similarities, but as we think about the evolution that the telecom sector has been mm -hmm. on, um, where um, the network to network interface was, was really the first um, time that we needed to consider interoperability. So where, you know, somebody wanted to be able to communicate a, a transfer of data from one network to, to another. Um, and that evolution is not that old in our sector. That, that evolution is, is, has, has happened within the last 15 to 20 years. Um, and then we've moved quite rapidly up that scale. So software defined networking, um, is still something that's evolving at a fairly rapid pace where customers are gaining control of being able to define um, what their on-demand services are. They can scale up their a retail partner, for example, wants to scale up um, their consumption during the Christmas period, but then scale it back um, in December and scale it back up for Valentine's Day, for example. Um, having software-defined networking enables them to take control of that and manage their costs um, much better as well, um, rather than having to pay a fee, the same fee all year round. APIs, which we all know about, um, has enabled exposing of the back end to that front end. Um, it can sometimes, um, it sometimes even give the appearance of automation where automation doesn't exist. But what it does is allow, en enables much more of that SDN or software defined um, networking to happen as well. And then we've moved into this common modeling. So this, the standards, everybody operating from the same level, um, unification, federation of the commercial framework, which is now ultimately leading into um, commercial settlement, where we say it's not just about technical automation now, but how do we think about the commercial settlement using um, distributed ledger technology as one way of automating that process. 
And then again, from the telecom sector, you know, we say it's not just the traditional carriers, it's not just AT&T or Deutsche Telekom or Verizon or um, Telstra or any of the other providers in the traditional wholesale telecom sector, but there are more and more players entering that space. Um, the cloud providers I mentioned before, AWS, Azure, um, the ones that are actually investing in the subsea cable systems that enable rapid data transfer um, geographically, they're, not long, they're no longer being built by the telecom sector. Google and Facebook um, and Twitter and, and those sorts of organizations are actually investing in building these subsea cable systems. So more and more these um, big cloud providers and OTT players are entering a more traditional space and expecting to, um, to partner with telecoms providers and have their services interconnect across them. So we are extending the ecosystem um, for everybody, whether that's by choice or um, being forced upon us. But what that means is that those networks need to continue to evolve in terms of interoperability. The technology um, advances, um, particularly as you're pulling different types of data from cloud, um, and therefore the, the settlement process needs to evolve together as, as well. And what we're doing at CBAN is bringing that community together so that we can create value for them by automating, automating the settlement process. So just very quickly, and um, maybe on this slide, I will hand over to, to Joe, but our development framework uh, looks like this. This is, uh, this is something that we use at this point in time, um, but is one that given, um, as Annabelle said, I've only been in role and I'm the inaugural CEO of CBAN since April. Um, this is a area that will continue to evolve for us um, as we think about um, bringing on both more new members, more use cases, and indeed um, organizations like Mobi outside of the traditional telecom sector, we start to collaborate with. Um, so certainly I would expect that development framework to continue to evolve. But Joe, um, I will hand over to you at this point um, to perhaps pick up on this slide and just let me know when you want to move forward on slides as well. Okay. Great, thank you, Louisa. So as um, Louisa was saying, this is our current development framework. And um, just to give you a little more a flavor about it and talk about uh, some of the things that we're working on at the minute, um, it's uh, through a member-led process. As Louisa said, CBAN is a member-led organization. And what we work on, the use cases that we set out to solve come from our members. And um, sometimes these use cases are uh, things that are part of their current business, which they believe could be more efficient. Um, uh, things that might have um, issues that um, automated settlement and DLT might be able to help them solve. And sometimes they are ideas for new ventures or how they want to work in the future. But we, we collect those, um, in an organized fashion um, from suggestions from our members. And then we move into productizing them. And that involves cooperating between our service provider members and our various technology partners and also other industry organizations like Mobi. And I'll speak about other organizations in a, in a minute um, and start to develop um, actual uh, definitions for uh, solution stacks that address the uh, use cases of interest to the members. And then we work on standardizing those, uh, discovering what the appropriate um, architectural components are and the APIs that allow them to um, both fit on top of the C-band architecture in general and uh, interoperate with each other. Um, and so essentially what we have coming out of that are specifications and we build to those specifications. We help incubate um, some of the uh, interoperability and uh, proofs of concept around those. And then we put them into production and scale them, step four, as you see there. And just to call your attention uh, across the, uh, the bottom there, 
you see in gray uh, under productize uh, data on demand, which is an example of a new area that our, many of our members are interested in being able to um, spin up connectivity um, of uh, an arbitrarily complex nature um, um, very quickly and use it for a designated period of time and then alter it, um, um, flex it, scale it up or scale it down and decommission it when it's no longer needed. That taking the same sort of mindset which is behind cloud computing and bringing it to networking. But if you think about it, um, networking um, is, it, it has a, a few different elements to it because uh, there are very few um, networks that actually cover the earth sufficiently. And you often need to collaborate with partners in different geographies or who might have different uh, capabilities that you need to build a data on demand network for a particular purpose. So uh, C-Band sees a particular a role for us there in helping make that happen. Over under three with standardized, uh, we have two other um, uh, application stacks that are addressing businesses that um, already exist but could operate better. And um, the first of those, uh, International Voice, Louisa already mentioned, um, how um, you know, voice um, used to be almost a uh, long distance voice, used to be almost a luxury and it's uh, much more of a commodity now. But there is still, uh, thanks in part to its long history, um, the process of settling for that um, is um, not as advanced as you might sometimes uh, expect. That there are, are manual steps, there are uh, things which can go wrong. And there is um, sometimes a bit of fraud as well. And our members are interested in attacking all of those. And uh, somewhat similarly, but with a couple of important differences is mobile roaming. Mobile roaming has uh, benefited by the presence of the GSMA. And we'll talk about that in a, in a minute. Um, it is somewhat more standardized, um, but there are still issues um, around the actual um, settlement and um, uh, reconciliation process, um, which could be more efficient. And uh, GSMA is working on that and CBAN is working on that. And we'll, we'll speak about that further in a moment. So um, could we go on to the next slide, please? Okay, so now I would like to, yes, speak about how um, Moby and C-Band might cooperate. So we've been talking about C-Band uh, up until now. Now I would like to spend some time talking about C-Band and Moby. And you see here, um, we have uh, four um, different industry organizations of which Moby is one. And uh, there, are, there is a constellation of industry organizations, especially in the telecommunications and telecommunications adjacent areas. Uh, I already mentioned the GSMA there in the upper left, which, as I said, uh, it pretty much owns um, everything to do with mobile services and uh, mobile roaming. Um, Mobi, uh, obviously, um, connected vehicles in the infrastructure and ecosystem around that, which you know better than I do. Um, down in the lower right is the MEF, um, um, who focus on data services. They were pretty much the ones who invented carrier ethernet and created a market by um, producing standards for that so that companies could come together. A bit like what I was describing with data on demand, before the MEF, um, there wasn't a standard way to even to build these networks, even to handcraft them. Uh, the MEF, uh, through their standardization, created uh, uh, those um, standard components which could be assembled and now working with them, uh, C-Band wants to help um, automate that so they can be done on demand. And finally, in the lower left is uh, the TM Forum, which has been for a couple of decades, the industry group which looks at um, business support systems and operation support systems, telco, BSS and OSS, which are the software systems which actually manage networks, both the, um, the networks themselves and the commercial structures um, that, that, that go with them. So these organizations all, including Moby, have a constituency around a particular, um, a particular 
uh, vertical market around some particular aspect uh, that involves um, communication. And uh, if you go to the next slide, please. My assertion um, is that um, all of these organizations are interested or have a need for um, mobile, uh, sorry, uh, automated settlement. So, uh, you know, uh, in fact, there are some organizations, I think, which are members of all of all four. Um, so there are um, mobile um, operators um, who um, have a large role to play in the GSMA who are very interested in um, uh, mobile internet of things, mobile IOT, which is obviously of a strong interest to uh, the, the Mobi community, um, et cetera. So where these organizations all overlap is that they all have an interest in helping their members facilitate mobile settlement um, and mobile settlement is not at their core, but it's very important to what they do. And that is why CBAN is cooperating with all of them to try to standardize the system of interoperability so that uh, it, it becomes um, irrelevant whether um, a, for example, a particular entity is uh, a MOBI entity or a GSMA entity or a MEF entity and wants to interoperate with, with somebody from one of the others, if they're all using CBAN, um, they have a standardized way of doing that and a standardized way of presenting themselves. Um, go to the next slide, please. So just, um, if you remember Louisa's slide earlier, um, I, I've done a riff on that to um, spend a little time looking at um, the devices um, that are common to the other members of, of CBAN and the ones uh, that Moby focus on and looking at how underneath um, there is a lot of similarity, a lot of commonality. So if you, if you um, look at this, uh, pic this simplified picture here, you have uh, two different operators, a green one to the left, a blue one to the right. Um, the car seems to be headed over towards um, the green operator. Maybe that is a, uh, you know, there's a, a border, international border or something between the two. Um, whether the car is roaming or not now, it is, it is about to be, uh, but, it wants to, but it will need to maintain connectivity. If it is using services which call upon um, edge compute, for instance, um, uh, they will they will need to be uh, provided in its in its new location, and essentially, point I want to make is that the phone in the um, person's hand there to the right, and the systems on board the car are involved in services are using services that require connectivity. Um, they require payments, um, tolls, electric charging. Um, perhaps even compensation uh, for deliveries, et cetera. Um, they could be using services that uh, need edge compute and need that edge compute to be located where that entity happens to be at any point in time. They need to be able to assert who they are and be uh, granted permission to um, enter certain spaces, to use certain toll roads, to be, to be taxed or or charged at appropriate rates. Uh, they need services based on where they are, whether that's navigation or um, you know, emergency assistance or, or anything in between. Um, and the fact that one is uh, coming from a device uh, in the person's hand and one is coming from services that are built in the car are certainly important for the two of them, but the underlying services that they need are um, very similar and there is a lot of commonality in it. And so when if you think of it from a software perspective, there is a lot that we can factor out and provide in one infrastructure that allows both of them, um, both of these uh, types of devices, classes of devices and the ecosystems to use those, those, common, uh, those common elements. So could we go to the next slide, please?
And those common elements are what we think of as the core services. So um, they represent the, for C-band, they represent our technological backbone. And that's true, uh, uh, that's true for um, Moby OMN as well. Uh, you could almost think of core services in our ecosystems as analogous to the services that operating systems provide to their applications. Um, they're, um, they're, they're the foundational things on top of which solution stacks are built. Remember that uh, I referred to some of the solution stacks in uh, the C-band world, such as around uh, wholesale voice and mobile roaming, et cetera. Well, those uh, solution stacks all need a set of core of core services, which our our um, operating system, if you will, um, provides them, um, and they also form a a they they provide a the necessary service of um, grounding these applications in their overall environments and uh, also the DLTs which underlie them. In some ways, the DLT services are exposed um, through a, 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 a set of core services um, which everybody knows how to access uh, regardless of, of what the underlying DLT technology might be. And the final point is that uh, just like operating systems, um, the core set of core services will evolve. We're, we're going to start with what we think is a, a good set to um, to launch us and to launch our applications. But as we have all seen over time, um, even with something like um, Apple's uh, Apple's iOS, um, over time, um, perhaps people have new ideas, new technologies, enable things, uh, somebody tries something out and uh, before long, it actually becomes uh, embedded in the operating system. So I fully expect that our core services will evolve over time, but we're going to start out with um, what I think is a, a, a good and robust set. So could we go to the next slide, please? So just to give an idea of what that might look like, um, as you can see here, going from the bottom up, um, and, and this, this slide, by the way, is one that uh, was developed through conversations between um, uh, Moby and uh, CBAN um, as we were exploring how we were going to work together. Um, so um, I credit uh, I credit many of the concepts here to Robin uh, at, at, at CBAN, um, uh, sorry, at Moby um, and our conversations. Um, but if you have a set of systems in the legacy communications environment and you have uh, distributed ledger technologies, uh, the items you see at the bottom of the slide in black and in gray, above that are a set of core services which um, are joint to both OMN and CBAN. And they provide services such as um, identity. I am who I say I am. Uh, assurance. I uh, I did what I said I did, and on through um, uh, governance, discovery, negotiation, etc., so that services can be found, so that we can, um, in an automated fashion, determine who can do what and will what, and then have the ability to go through and um, check that they uh, that action were performed as, uh, as, as, as requested and governance for dealing with issues um, around that when maybe things uh, didn't always go correctly. Uh, so there's a set of core services that uh, all of the different applications um, could use. And above that, you see a set of OM OMN solutions, the ones in gold, and C-band solutions, the one in green, the um, C-band solutions, uh, where you see it says uh, solution stack one, MVP one, stack two, MVP two, um, et cetera. Those are the solution stacks that I've been referring to for things like wholesale voice, mobile roaming, fraud detection, data on demand. Those are where the value is actually found. Um, and those are built using one set of services down below, um, which, as I said before, actually um, package and present 
the capabilities in uh, the DLTs and perhaps other legacy systems. And so what we envision is that um, Mobi and CBAN will be able to jointly define a set of core services and build on them um, together. And we see the, uh, an approach like that is as having a number of benefits, which could we go to the next slide? I'll tell you about. So what are the benefits of doing that? Um, uh, well, first of all, point one, Mobi and C-Band need to supply their members with um, essentially the same services. So you have two large organizations with many members in common and they need to do um, many most, if not all of the same things. Um, they also, um, there will be a desire to interoperate um, between um, those members. Um, and, you know, it is uh, a, as a large um, ICT provider who is a member of GSA and handles mobile IoT and roaming and um, does it on behalf of connected vehicles. Well, that an organization like that has interest in what the GSMA does and what Mobi does and what C-Band does. So they need to, inter but what they fundamentally need to do is to interoperate with their peers uh, to supply services to their customers and their peers' customers. And um, not only does this kind of cooperation um, reduce duplication, but it gives us a robustness through wider adoption. Because if you have one, um, one set, one large um, set of services with um, one large pool of demanding customers uh, using it, um, they will quickly become more, more robust. Um, and that is to the benefit of, of, of everybody. And if you have that kind of interoperability built in by design, where a Mobi ID is a CBAN ID and somebody who is registered with one um, can do can operate with partners who are part of the other network. That is immediately a larger pool of players and possibilities, and that um, that can help spur um, more innovation and more ideas that can be tested. Because we, we somebody who who has an idea for how uh, a service that might be might normally be um, the home of say. Um, uh, an organization like the MEF, but is of interest to um, uh, uh, people in the Mobi ecosystem. Um, if somebody has an idea for that, they don't have to go through and build the initial plumbing. The interoperability is there. They can build something to test their idea. And that is going to enable, um, I believe, more innovation uh, faster. Uh, can we go to the next slide, please? And just a, a moment of, 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 of uh, perhaps levity, but also to make a point about why it makes sense to work together, but also why we need to do it right. Um, I, I'm sure most of you are familiar with XKCD and have probably seen this cartoon. Um, and uh, yes, sometimes you have 14 um, competing standards and somebody says, ah, yes, we need to do something to unify them all and you wound up with, and you wind up with 15. Well, I want to avoid that. And what I would love us to be able to do is to have um, a set of standards, um, which maybe aren't quite competing, but are necessarily adjacent and try uh, for once to help unify them for the benefit of the larger community and the network effects that that can achieve. Um, so uh, with that, um, I will hand it back to Louisa for uh, the next slide. Thanks, Joe. Uh, which is is just uh, is just one slide before we open it up to uh, to any questions. But uh, we do believe that this is an opportunity, and we're really so pleased to be able to to work with Moby here because it is really about seizing the opportunity. Um, so ensuring that OEMs and ICT service providers um, really shape the ecosystem that will determine the future of interoperability for. Um, not just the benefit of both sectors and both industries, but the, ultimately for the end user at the end of that process as well. But together we think that we drive the uh, technology innovation that will certainly 
define next generation settlement and ultimately that achieves greater network um, effects with, uh, with shared standards across both. So that was just really one final wrap up and uh, happy to open it up to, to any questions. Thank you, Luis and Joe. Does anybody have any questions? Ideas for potential applications are also accepted. <laughs> um, hi, this is Jim Mason. Um, I apologize. Your 40 minute presentation has accidentally generated three hours worth of questions and answers yeah. I need now. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm blaming you for that, not me, of course. That's your problem. Um, but that said, um, it's an interesting idea, let's put it that way, to try to solve the problems you're attempting to solve, C-band, right? So there are all these different networks that do exist, and there are many problems, in a sense, um, in a sense, connecting things today, not just simple things like IAT devices, but far more complex. You wind up with, I guess, the key to understanding this thing and maybe organizing it is probably trying to figure out an order that the use cases you would look at should be attacked. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So there's I some cases do. I could throw on the table and say, hey, wait a minute, let's not address that use case now, shove that one back to phase three of whatever the roadmap is. There are some that would make sense to address up front, And it's not as simple as saying it's just core infrastructure stuff. It's a little more complicated because the core infrastructure capabilities in effect have to support I'll call it an initial set of use cases that you target. So ordering, figuring out the right use cases and then ordering them is a big deal um, to drive what the core network services are gonna look like. Um, so that's, I guess, question one is, what exactly are the use cases you've targeted? Um, there's many more on top of that. Um, and ultimately, the other thing I'll say is, you're not just a standards organization to point out, like, yes, you can drive other standards, but in reality, is you're proposing a services network as well. Am I correct on that? Um, so, yeah, yes, that is right. We're, we're not, uh, we don't consider ourselves a standards, a standards right. organization. Right, so what you're trying to do is with this consortium is actually deliver services on a network, right? Correct, yeah, that's right. So if you're doing that, so then the, the question that obviously comes down in thinking about your network there's plenty of existing networks that already support a variety of different use cases. Admittedly, there's challenges, but it depends upon the use cases to how well or poorly those existing networks work. So then ignoring the planning side of what you're doing, the strategic planning, I'll call it. If you look at the operational side, if you expect your networks to be used, you have to have a competitive model that says, hey, our networks are gonna be more reliable, lower cost, and all those other operational standards. Have you done anything analysis on that? Joe, do you wanna pick that one up? Um, well, we have, so uh, I guess, I would say that we are doing um, we are doing some of that, and we are to to tie an answer back to something that you said uh, a little bit earlier, or in, in one of your first um, hypotheses that you put out, um, that um, we have to figure out what the right uh, initial approach is and what the right uh, sequencing is of the services that we. Uh, that we introduce and, and, and when. And on the C-Ban side, that's, that's going on now, the question of um, where to start and how exactly to start um, is, is, where, is where we are. In terms of um, comparing ourselves to other organizations that might be similar, uh, at this point, most of our energy has been on, uh, if you remember my Venn diagram slide that uh, had C-band at the center of a number of different organizations, um, mm -hmm. I think it's fair to say most of, the, of, of our energy has been in looking where we can ally ourselves and, and um, provide that service to other organizations who don't necessarily have mobile settlement at their core, like the uh, the MEF and the GSMA in, in our world, um, both are doing a lot of work around their particular verticals. 
Um, and, and, and that, when I say work around the particular verticals, work that touches on um, mobile settlement for sure, but that is not where their um, expertise is. And what we're finding is that uh, they know their problem domain really well. They know what their members need and want. We have a set of expertise around um, mobile settlement itself, and we're looking for ways to work together, um, uh, not dissimilarly to Moby. Uh, in term, but, but in terms of actual um, comparison with others is competition. That has not been, uh, that really hasn't been the focus. Um, looking for partnership has been much more the focus. Yeah, at so least from my perspective. Yeah, so th th there's a real challenge because you're not, you're not talking about cooperating on standards. That's a different concept, right? As, and that actually happens all the time in the Moby space. I'll say it. Um, you know, for the automotive space, uh, you know, all the uh, OEMs work together on different projects and so on today, which does make sense. And Moby provides a, a good framework for coordinating that. I think. Um, mm -hmm. But moving away from just coordination. When you talk about actual operation of a network, uh, it's a completely different uh, business model in a sense. Um, and the decision to use the framework or not um, is different as well. And so in a sense, if I were trying to offer, if, if I were running C-Ban and I were trying to offer a, an operating model, if you will, I would have to think through competitively for the use cases I'm looking at, um, you know, how well is my service offering gonna compete with the ones that are already in place today? You know what I mean? It's it's a. I don't see yeah. a way that you can say I, 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 we're doing a unified standard without um, looking at call it the competitive value that you're delivering. Does that make sense? It it, it does. It does make sense. And so go uh, on, Joe. Uh, go ahead. No. We're probably going to say the go same. On, go thing, ahead. So I'll let you answer it. Okay. Well, what I what I was going to say, uh, Jim, and then I, then I'll turn it to um, uh, to Louisa is that. Um, um, uh, first of all, on, 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 on standards, just a little bit, um, we're not a standards organization per se, but we are involved in kind of in the, in that coordination sense that you described with some of the other organizations on creating standards for interoperability. And we do have something of a role there. Now, when it comes to actually the, the operating model and how, um, how services are, uh, uh, well, you know, what the, um, what the commercial model is. Um, we also have a uh, commercial officer who has joined us. He's not on the call today uh, and is working through um, some of the things you discussed. And Luis, so that's probably what you were going to, or sim similar to what you were going to say, so I can hand it to you from there. Um, yes, but I guess the other thing that I would overlay on that is that this is a distributed network that's run by our members. So the actual operation of the network um, is in the hands of the, the members. CBAN just oversees that to make sure that it continues to be something that's fair and, and interoperable. But then when you talk about the solutions, we still have the vendors, the, the, billing, the traditional billing providers, the clearing houses, those that have always provided billing and settlement services um, in some respects to um, the carrier sector, who will be the ones that will build the applications that run on the network. So, so I guess in some sense, they still have the obligation to work out what their competitive advantage is in building those applications. We just provide the network for them to do it. All right, so then my understanding is, I'll call it wrong. <laughs> um, what it is, is we have existing service providers, to your point, many different types of communication technologies and so on. And what you're offering in effect is coordination, if I've got it right, on, I'll call it services management from a settlement perspective on top of those existing uh, networks in place. Yes, you could, but I one one step further than just coordination, because in future, um, the vendors will have to have their solutions certified by CBAN. So what we'll do is we'll provide a, you know, so when ABC carrier talks to XYZ vendor, they can, they can be assured that it meets the, the specifications and the requirements to operate securely and safely on the CBAN network. Um, right. So again, the coordination isn't around the, 
I'll call it the management of the services, not the services themselves, to be honest. Yeah. And so what that means is, which is actually good to me, so I'm slowly understanding, I apologize. But what that means is honestly that in effect, I guess the good news is that we have open opportunities with all of these service providers to continue to what I call grow and enhance the services that are available on a network, right? Mm -hmm. You know, things like automated language translation, all kinds of things could happen in a sense. And you're not competing with any of that. You're literally coordinating, and as you said, and probably certifying the exactly. ability of all of these network players to, in a sense, work together on the settlement side. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. So if somebody if somebody comes up with an with a good idea for say something that involves that translation you were describing, but they need a a uh, an infrastructure for perhaps ordering the service and settling it and, and all that, that is, that is what C-Band can provide. Mm -hmm. Perfect, thanks for your help. Thanks, Jim. Sure. Thanks for the question, Jim. Anybody else? We have time for a couple more. If not, I'm going to thank you both once again. Luis and Joe is a really- Annabelle, this is Chris. Oh, I've got sorry. a question since we have some time. Go for sorry, it, I please. Was muted and so missed a little bit. Um, Joe and, and, and Luisa, when talking about something that's kind of radically new like this, uh, it's often helpful to come up with an analogy that people are familiar with uh, to help them understand it. So uh, my analogy for what we're trying to do here is uh, to create a settlement uh, data exchange and perhaps payments network for a new, uh, a, a new payments technology. And the, the analogy I use is what happened with the Visa network uh, back in the early 1960s. Uh, that was a, a new uh, ecosystem arose for merchant cards and merchant payments. Uh, banks' existing payments infrastructure uh, and ways of cooperating didn't handle that. Uh, they needed to exchange data about borrowers, about payments. Uh, and so they formed a club, uh, the Visa Network, uh, also later MasterCard Network, uh, uh, to, uh, to handle that uh, and to operate within that new ecosystem and new technology. And I, I think that what we're doing here is creating uh, a payment settlements and a data exchange services layer uh, for uh, the IoT infrastructure, or at least the roaming part of the IoT uh, ecosystem. Is that the right analogy? Uh, is that how you think about it, or is I there a better that's one? A, that's a great analogy. I might want to steal that. Is that okay? <laughs> uh, Plagiarism is basic to culture. <laughs> yeah, well, I, it, it's a sincerest form of flattery. I, I think that's a, that that's a that that is a a a very good analogy, especially for helping people get their head around uh, the basic concept. Yes. The Visa Network later has one of the um, most successful IPO in history. There you go. There's, there's <laughs> something to aspire That's to. That's a perfect analogy, but it's good for concept. <laughs> Anyone else have questions? It was a really informative presentation for all of us, especially for our members and, and those in our OMN circle. Uh, our next lecture will be in the new year, 2021. So until then, I wish you all health, happiness, and very merry holidays. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Thank you very much for having us. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.